What's going on guys? My name is Rick Spates from Studio Spates. I run a one-man creative agency out of my home studio in the Netherlands. I make all kinds of creative content for uh, brands, entrepreneurs, artists, whatever. Think of uh, animation videos, motion graphics, uh, audio productions. Today I'm going to teach you how to use a very simple Expresso setup to animate basically any, any parameter in Cinema 4D with the fields or the falloffs. Um, usually this is reserved for more graphable objects, but with this very simple Expresso setup that takes about 10 seconds to set up, you can animate basically any parameter. So let's get into it. All right, so I was inspired by the Entering the Fields presentation that was uploaded by Cineversity. That was done by Orestes Constantinidis, held at Seagraph 2018. It's a fantastic presentation about the fields. You should definitely check it out. I'll link to it in the description below. It's a 45-minute uh, presentation, but you, you should really check it out. It has a ton of info. One of the things that was discussed in this presentation, uh, I'm about to show you. This info was too good to hide in a long video, so I want to share it with you in this uh, quick tutorial. I'm going to expand a little on the technique as well, so be sure to watch this video as well. It's going to be different than the presentation where I got the info from. Alright, so how to use the fields or the fall off on basically any parameter. It's <clears throat> we'll start off here in Cinema 4D with a very simple object. I'll load in a cube and put it in a cloner. Let's, for demonstration's sake, put it in a radio cloner, but feel free to uh, use anything you like. So yeah, a radio cloner with, with uh, 10 clones. So basically, normally if you want to use the fields, you'll um, have to add a MoGraph effector or a uh, something like a plane, for example, plane effector, which has a couple of parameters that you can tweak, and it has a falloff tab that allows you to um, use fields that influence the parameters you tweak. So in this case, the, the position is upped by 100 centimeters as the default. Turn it off, you can scale the objects, you can rotate them, all kinds of stuff. So this is just for demonstration purposes. I'll delete the plane, you don't need it. Uh, so that's, that's when you want to use uh, falloffs on a effector. So when I check the cloner, it doesn't have a falloff tab, which kind of makes sense because you're not really affecting anything with it. Uh, so if I would add a plane effector, then I could f use falloffs on the plane. But what if I want to use falloffs on the count number or the radius, for example? You can do that too with a very simple Expresso setup. So you'll have to right click and go to Programming Tags Expresso. Now again, this is very simple, so don't be intimidated by Expresso. So when you've added the Expresso tag, just drag in the object that you want to uh, affect with fields. In this case, the cloner. I drag it in and I want to affect the count number. So just click once on count and drag it to the blue box or to the cloner field here in or the, to the cloner, cloner tab here in the Expresso editor. And voila, you can plug something into the count number. So then what you want to add is a falloff or a field. You press, you uh, right click and go to new node, motion graphics, falloff. <clears throat> and you'll want to add a Expresso Calculate range mapper. These two are very important. So the falloff has, um, doesn't really know that it's 
So, so I want the fall off to edit the count number of the, the cloner, but it doesn't really know what number it has to use for the field. So that, that where the, that's where the range mapper comes in. So I plug in the fall off value into the input and the output of the range mapper I plug into the count number. So right now everything disappears because first of all, I don't have a field. So let's add for demonstration purposes, a linear field and add a upper limit to the range mapper. So let's say 50. Right away, 50 clones appear. If I go to my cloner, oh, sorry, <laughs> 25 appear because the, the field has already influenced it. So when you drag the field all the way up to the other side, it says 50, which is the output upper. So again, we have a linear field that influences the count number. When you go to the cloner window, you can see that an expresso tag is influencing the count number. Now this opens basically unlimited possibilities. Um, especially for, for animating without any keyframes. Because, of course, we're not limited to using the linear field. We can use all the fields for this. So let's use a different kind of field. We could use a shader field, for example, and add a noise shader. The, everybody knows the Cinema 4D noises are incredible um, and offer a, a great way to drive certain parameters. In this case, we can use it as a field as well. So we could, for example, have the field animate. When you add a animation speed value of one, you'll see the, uh, the noise field edit the count number of the clones. And again, we can always tweak the amount of clones we want. So in the output upper window, we could maybe set it to 10. Or that appears a bit, appears to be too little, but we could use 100 as well. Whatever we like, you know. I'll just put it back to 50 because that seems to be a good number. Um, so we could also have this animation of the, the noise loop. So in the loop period, you can fill in, I think it's three for this project. Yeah. So this project is 90 frames. The, the project frame rate is 30 frames per second. And the loop period, you'll have to fill in the amount of seconds of the project to, to be able uh, to have, a, have the noise loop. 30 frames a second, 90 frames is three seconds. So in the loop period, I fill in three and then the noise will loop. And this is all without keyframes, of course. So, um, and again, the possibilities are endless. So we might as well add uh, another another parameter that we could automate. So let's use the radius. Just click on radius and drag it into the cloner. You'll have it see, uh, you'll have it pop up here. And we could pull the range mapper, plug it into the radius, and it will, the, the shader field will also automate the radius. But Remember that we filled in 50 here in the radius. Oh, uh, so, sorry, we filled in 50 in the output upper. That means that the maximum amount, amount of count or clones we're going to get would be 50. And the maximum, maximum amount of 
uh, radius would be 50 as well. I'm not sure why it's this low. Maybe it's because of the, the seed of the noise. Or maybe it really is. Oh, this one was bigger. That seems to be a bit bigger. Yeah, so this one goes all the way up to uh, 39. But this is, of course, due to the range mapper. So we could also add another range mapper and have that same fall off field, the same shader field, drive another range. So we'll put in a value. Oh, sorry. In the input and put this output into the radius. And then just change the number of this one, so maybe to 500, which will give us a way bigger circle or way bigger radius of the, the clone, the cloner. And again, these are fields, so everything that usually comes with the, the, the field window is usable here, so we can quantize this uh, noise we can use the delay uh, effectors or a modifier, sorry, these, these are modifiers. So quantize, for example, and you'll see it get quantized and get more choppy. Could be a nice effect if you want to go for it. Uh, and we could maybe stack a delay effect on top of that with a spring. So the spring modifier um, yeah, makes it just a bit more bouncy. And again, no keyframes at all. Everything is just driv driven by this uh, noise field. So don't forget, you can do this with, with basically any parameter of any object. So don't feel constricted by the cloner or uh, these count or radius parameters. You can use anything. You can use the Fournoy fracture, you could use a Mo spline or Mo text. Everything could be used. So yeah, feel free to experiment. Don't be limited by the things you see in this tutorial. Just get out there and uh, use this simple script on everything. So that's it for the tutorial. I hope you learned something. Share this tutorial with your buddies and co-workers if you liked it. And please subscribe if you want to see me make more tutorials for you. I really love doing this, but I would like to see the subscriber count uh, go up. So please subscribe and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. What's something that you would like to learn that I could teach you? Just drop a comment below and I'll see if I can do it for you. I hope you learned something and take care. See you in the next video. Bye bye.